Hey everyone, it's Gareth Flood here. And I have a question for you. How would you like to increase your productivity, further your career, and learn a new personal development tool? That's what we're going to cover today. And that tool is the power web or the web of influence. Now, this is great for you to navigate within your own organization, particularly if you're in a large corporate organization, but also if it's your organization that's starting to scale and you have a number of employees, but also if you want to learn about your prospects uh, or your supplier companies, anyone you can map this to that's useful for you. So how the power web or the web of influence works, you set it up according to this. This is a standard two by two matrix made famous in the consulting world, management consulting, but it is very useful. Don't discard it just on that basis. Uh, there's not many things in life that cannot go into this and also cannot be solved by a two by two matrix. So that is worthy of a tool of its own merit. So how you set this up, uh, two by twos along the X axis, it normally goes low to high. Along the Y axis, it goes low too high. Therefore, the benefit of that is things that aren't happening, aren't good, aren't moving, i.e. bad, land up in the bottom left. And the things that you want that are going to happen, uh, powerful, whatever, uh, in the top right. That's how you set it up. I have seen in the past some people set it up slightly differently. Normally, they switch these, which lands up the things you want or you need to take note of here. That doesn't really work. My plea is we can lift another half a percent on GDP. Everybody sets it up the same way. So every time we look at it, we know exactly what we're looking at. We can just get to the meat of the conversation. So that's how you set it up. Now, with the power web, on the X axis, we have power. And on the Y axis, we have trust. So what this means is you look at everybody in your organization. So say I'm starting a new role normally takes six months to figure out who people are, what's going on. This is a way to try and map them and, and speed that whole journey up. So what happens was, uh, let's look down here first. So if everyone you're interacting with, if people have low power and also low trust in the organization, that means they are what is called spectators. So I'll draw some stands here. There they are. They're sitting in the stands, spectators. They have no power to do anything and nobody trusts them to do anything. So they're down here. Now, if you have low power, but high trust, then these people are what is called potential Potential foot soldiers. So just someone with a little gun and an army hat. So potential foot soldiers. So they can get things done, um, but they don't have a lot of power. So they can rally to your cause is the other thing. Uh, if you have a cause, they can rally around you. They will follow people. They are looking to follow people in power because they don't have power on their own and they normally haven't had time to, or they don't have the ability to create or take the power. So potential foot soldiers. Now, if people have high power and low trust, obviously they're in this box, and these people are known as rivals, traitors, and the unknown. So we'll put a big question mark and maybe a knife. Yep. Rivals, traitors, and the unknown. So they have a lot of power, but you can't trust them. And people in the organization can't trust them. Um, so some organizations which have a hyper-competitive culture, you see this, uh, particularly if the CEO and the senior management is down here and they're running the company this way. Yes, they can get advantages in the short term, um, but the reality of a hyper-competitive organization, and if you want to set that culture up, is everybody's running around just stabbing each other all the time. 
you know, you land up with one or two clicks or cliques running the show, suddenly that clique falls out of favor, they all get stabbed, it's just, it's chaotic. So yes, you can make big gains in the short term, but in the long term, is it sustainable? And is it a people, uh, is it a place people really want to work? I mean, maybe you've seen, in, you know, plenty of examples, maybe like in investment banking and um, trading, um, it, it also attracts a certain type of culture or certain type of personality, which is definitely out of favor in this modern culture that we're in. But even if you're in a normal organization, you still get people that are rivals, traitors, and the unknown. Normally, these are people that are pretty much only out for themselves. They view everybody else as like bodies to climb over or tissues to be used up for what they want and then discarded. So rivals, traitors, and the unknown. But they do get results using some of these nefarious ways, which is why they often have some power. They're also sometimes like ag aggressive in personality and for whatever reason they get, they, they get their crew power. So they land up here, but you cannot trust them, which leaves us to the big box. So if you have high power and high trust, then you are a power, a power broker. So we'll do a big Zeus lightning bolt here and a dollar sign. Why not? So power broker. So you have the power and you have the trust. You, these people are trustworthy. You can trust them. The organization also trusts them, which means they can get things done sustainably. So the CEOs and the senior management of most companies are, and by all rights should be here. So now, you know, who everyone or, or how to map everybody. You then get a different color pen and you actually map people using little circles or whatever works for you. So ideally, like you said, the CEO should be running here. Again, if culture is the shadow of the leader, which is a saying I've heard often, it's very good. They should be very, very top right. They have all the power, all the trust. So if everything flows from them, that's good. If they're switching their mind, stabbing everybody in two minutes notice, um, it, it's not gonna work. So anyway, you map everyone. So you say CEO and then other functions or people you work with. So maybe you have, um, let's put here, marketing manager is there. You can put one SM, you know, sales manager one. You can put sales manager two is maybe there. Sales manager three doesn't care, is on their way out, they've already checked out, they're due to retire in a year, whatever. Uh, rivals, traitors in the unknown, who knows, sales manager four, operations manager, HR, uh, whoever. So you map them, ideally by their names. And now you have a power web and a web of influence. The people up here have the power and they're running the most influence. So a couple of other advantages of this. Once you have everybody mapped out, you know who's who, you know who you can trust, who you should be aligning with, who can get things done, who's driving the organization, and also who not to waste time with being realistic. Sometimes you get in and you find some people uh, in your organization or maybe some customers really good at talking, and then you find out like months later, too late, they're actually just good at talking. They don't actually have any power. They're just sitting in the stands. So this person will want to spend a lot of time with you, but you can't actually get anything done with them. This person is useful to help you get things done, actually to help you execute, but they're not gonna have the power to do it, to sign off on getting things done. So they are useful in executing. And these people, effectively, they're on the watch list. You know, um, can you ally with them or or just watch out for them because they're rivals, they'll take you out at the last minute, traitors, double cross you or question marks. Sometimes question marks means you haven't had enough time or data to know, do they go here or here? So you map where everybody is. You can even put their names next to it. And that becomes a snapshot in time of the web of influence in your organization. Part two of how this is really useful is you then take the names and you go dot, dot, dot to a second tab or slide and you have a number of cards. 
for each of these. So in this card, so say for this person is the CEO, you go over here, you put their name, you put their title, and there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five things you can mark for each of these people. So number one, you can say, okay, this is the person. What is their style compass? If they're, in the, if they're a power broker and I need to know how they operate and I need to be able to influence them myself and they need to get to know me, how, how do I do that? Okay, so the first thing to know is what's their style compass? So this is how do they naturally operate? What is their style? There's a number of ways you can do this. Um, you can use personality tests, for example. You can use like uh, Myers-Briggs or Insights Discovery. Particularly if your organization has already done all these tests, you can just find it out. So if you find out, let's say they're a, you know, they're a high red, you know, meaning they like um, slightly aggressive, they like to get things done, they like action over words, etc., etc. Or uh, my uh, Myers-Briggs, you could say they are an, I don't know, E N F J that's useful and then you know exactly how they operate uh, the second thing is hot issues so what is the hot issues for this person if if the planning or the cycle of a business is normally annual uh, what's the hot issues for this person this year even if they know what the future things they should be working on what are the hot issues right now so it's no point the marketing manager if you're the marketing manager and you come to say, I've got this great new brand campaign, but the hot issues for the CEO is, uh, we're implementing a new IT system and a CRM system, and one of the factories just burnt down, so I've got major supply issues. So his hot issues are supply chain issues and IT question mark. If the IT implementation goes badly and we cannot invoice, and at the same time we're having supply chain issues, we have a problem. So don't then come to me and talk to them, say, hey, see what you think of the new colors of the new logo for the brand campaign that we want to do. Okay, that's, that's gonna end badly. So what is the hot issues for this person in the next six to three to six months? And that could be business operational issues in the example I've just given, um, or it could be like business plan, general business issues like customer acquisition. We don't have enough, we're not acquiring enough customers or we are just losing too many customers. You can see it, you can see it in the PL, right? You can, he can see it in the results, like margins are declining, revenues declining, we're having to lower prices to try and keep customers, but customers are still leaving. So he, his hot issues could be customer retention and customer acquisition, which from a marketing perspective is really useful. Now you can frame or rework your plan to do that. It's the job of marketing anyway, for customer acquisition and to help customer retention. So if you frame, hey, we're doing this new marketing program, we're gonna increase uh, customer acquisition by 2% and we're going to stop customer, we're gonna reduce customer churn or losing customers by 2%. Also, those two combined uh, is quite a big jump. They will love that, okay? So what is the hot issues for the person? The next one is, Red flags, so this is obvious, if you're not used to the terminology, red flags, back in the days they had bullfighting, the matador or the bullfighter would wave the red flag, the bull would charge it. So bad news, red flag is anything is gonna get charged down and, and gored by the bull, so you're gonna get flattened. So don't wave the red flag. So again, what are the red flags? So hot issues could be, like I said, customer acquisition. A red flag is something the person's just gonna go, Ugh! They're gonna have the reptilian brain reaction. They, they just do not like this, do not talk about it. I don't like it, that is a red flag. Um, and yeah, whatever that example is, something they just don't like. This is, and you find this out, people say, don't mention this to that person, or don't bring this up, you know? Don't bring the, don't bring the IT implementation they did five years ago, because that, that ended badly, um, et cetera. Or don't bring up, uh, in many cases, like could be like um, if, if they're a hardcore CEO with a finance background, don't bring up social media because they can't link it to directly to sales. So they struggle with that. Red flags. You can list all of the red flags here. One, two, three, etc. The next one is when you last contacted them. So obviously you have a number of people. You're going to have at least five within this matrix. 
it's hard to keep track of when you last contacted them and what you talked about. So you can have, when did you last contact them? And time goes quickly. So you could have, I last talked to them in Q1 about X, Y, Z. You can have this in this card, or um, if you really want to get into it, you can even keep a spreadsheet. Here's all the names, what I last contacted them, uh, what we last talked about, because some people um, you need to keep in touch with. So if, 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 if they're a power broker and you only talk to them once a year, that's a problem because you, know, you haven't talked to them from Q1, from January, and you go and talk to them in October, um, they'll be like, well, who are you? Well, you know, I haven't seen you for a while. I can't remember, what, what do you do again? And what, 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 okay, I know who you are. What, what are you working on? Um, anything, you know, not a place you really want to be. So you can say, I last contacted them uh, a month ago, and you could put a reminder in, find some way to contact them or send them an email every three months, for example which is the last point about next steps uh, or actions, if you like. What are your next steps or actions with this person? Again, if they're a power broker, you should have some next steps or actions. What am I, how am I, how am I managing this person or how do I uh, get in front of them or develop a relationship with them? What's my next actions? Could be reach out, could be, hey, invite them for a catch up, uh, set up a meeting on a particular topic, send them a white paper, um, you know, set up a quarterly review, uh, set up a meeting specifically to tell them about your project or your proposal or your new product, whatever. But these also apply around here. So these should definitely be done for the power brokers, but are equally applicable around here. So spectators, once you know somebody's a spectator, you could fill this out once. Uh, the next step could be do nothing. Great, tick. Rivals, traitors and allies could be next step uh, watch out or monitor or keep an eye on the project that they're working on um, because it has some overlap with yours uh, and that's it so it's really two simple things you have a two by two matrix four blocks everybody falls into a block and then for the key people could be for everyone but definitely for the key people you go over here and you fill out these cards style compass hot issues red flags last contacted and next steps or actions. And that is a great way to manage the influence in your organization and power. And once you've done this once, it doesn't change weekly. So you could update it quarterly, you could update it half a year, or maybe in December when things calm down a bit, whenever that is in your organization or industry, you could update it once a year. And you know, people change as well. So that's the other, that's the other key point. Now again, um, just to note, I didn't come up with this, like a lot of stuff, particularly in the corporate world or in business, a lot of it's recycled again and again and again. Um, but where I got this from, particularly, which I found useful, was uh, this book. It's an author called Joe Owen. This is a very good book. If you want to learn more about how to influence, he wrote this book called How to Influence, which I'll put a link in the description below if you want to find it on Amazon, but that's a very good book. So credit to Joe for this one where credit is due. Um, I've seen lots of other versions of it and variations of it over the years, but this was the way um, I chose to uh, put it together, which um, I then did. I, I typed all this up and I put it into a useful uh, PowerPoint slides that I used, um, which I'm going to share to you for free. So I've also got those exact templates. They're just blank templates with an example of this filled out. So if this is useful, again, you can go to the link in the description below and uh, you'll find a place to a web page where you can download these templates for free and implement and use immediately. And they will be very useful to you as they have been for me. So I hope you find that useful. Go ahead, click the link. You can get these templates for free. So again, that is, like I said, another very useful tool in your career development, um, in your personal development, because you can apply this to everybody. And you can also apply it to yourself, because once you've mapped out where everybody is, do another take of uh, how do they see you? Okay, because if you think, you know, you want to be a power broker, but if the power brokers currently think that, 
you're here, you're either a rival or a traitor or you're a question mark, um, how, how are they going? They're going to interact with you differently. Same thing if they think you're a spectator or they think you're a potential foot soldier, they will treat you differently. So you can do a second take to say, well, how, how do these people view you? And then what do you want to do in your personal development plan of either upskilling your uh, influencing skills um, or getting like a big project or some results across the line that you can show that moves you around the box. And they think, oh, hang on, this person, yes, they have power and I can trust them. Um, I will move them in my own perception up to here. And then you can really start to interact and make a difference, not just for the sake of power and influence, but again, to get things done in any organization, you know, people are naturally going to fall into all of these boxes. You, you, you're never going to have everybody in here. Okay. But once you are in here and you're working with these people with good trust and good power and good intent, this is when organizations really fly and take off because you can trust each other. You're all pulling in the same direction. Nobody's worrying about being stabbed every time you go to work. Uh, and then it's when you can really deliver great results. So that's the objective to get everybody here. So take one is map everybody out, do that. Take two is think, well, where am I on this? And then what's my personal development plan to move myself? And maybe you just want to be here. Maybe <laughs> you don't want the, all the um, you know, responsibility and pressure that comes with being a power broker. You say, I just want to be a foot soldier and align to one of these people, rally to their cause, do my work, work-life balance, go home, take the money, job's good. Okay. So that's two ways to do it. Um, so again, uh, very useful. Click the link below, get the templates, fill it out. So that's how it's used for a personal development tool to increase your productivity, to know who you're dealing with, and also for career development, if that's important to you. So again, it's all available for you. Click the link below, get the templates, get to work. I'll see you soon.